Aloha family of light. Uh, so I channeled Jane Roberts, who's an author, uh, wrote several, quite a few books, uh, many, well, maybe, I don't know, five or six were books that were channeled uh, by her. And she channeled Seth, a character called Seth, which is a, basically an aspect of her psyche or a higher self aspect of her uh, that she channeled to write books. And so I felt compelled to try to make contact with her <clears throat> and so uh, I channeled and what I did was I wrote it down so I'm just gonna read what I wrote and it is what it is I know it's very probably controversial to do so and whatnot but uh, you know you just got to do what you feel like you, you got to do so I did what I felt like I had to do so I'm going to read it now. Uh, greetings, Jane. As you know, I'm a huge fan of you and Seth. I've read most of your material, which resonates with me greatly. I feel a bit like you did when you received material on William and Jung and psychic politics. Like this is a surefire way to attract a myriad of opinions and criticisms. But I am compelled nevertheless, and I wholeheartedly believe it possible if consciousness is at a certain level. I've expanded greatly in the past five years or so, and I know I'm approaching something. Perhaps this is that something. I'm not necessarily going into trance and I have no scribe it's just me and this pen and page I'm hoping you will seize my hand and consciousness and come on through since this is our first rodeo so to speak I'm not sure how to begin I think it best to trust myself and open the space for allowance, which I do now. I will wait until I feel your prompting and give you the floor. Today is Wednesday, February 19th, 9.30 a.m., 2020. How cool is this? You actually caught me in the library. I'm still writing books. I knew someone would be coming along, and here you are. Let me say that I'm still in contact with Seth, and he resides in a yet higher dimension like he did when I was Earth incarnate. There are layers, as you are fond of saying. I've accessed you in what is known as the Akashic Records in your terms and scanned your being, as this allows for instant acquaintance we will start slow as you need time to feel your way into such communications. As you said, it's about trusting yourself. I perceive that you don't feel qualified for such an undertaking, but let me assure you that no one is. These things go beyond the normal boundaries of consciousness, and you will get better at holding the frequency as you practice. So I will speak to you as a friend for now, not as someone delivering an urgent message to humanity, who are usually layers removed from even coming across such a message, as it's not something they readily co-create, to use your words. I will say that you are quite free of distortions that can greatly hinder such an endeavor, so our ability to connect is quite strong. 
I'll tell you a few things that will help this process. These aren't requirements, but suggestions. To be light stabilizes the connection, so don't eat a large meal immediately prior to contact. The same time of day helps to sort of auto-tune the connection. Being emotionally stable helps to ground the contact and lessen the possibility for distortions. I find it interesting that you've made a couple of contacts recently. The latest one was quite precious and childlike for a man of your age. I'm not being disparaging at all, but will comment that you didn't need to tell the contactee that they need not say anything in your language but to simply give an impression which was done per your request. The things you said to this contact were beautiful and heartfelt and I think he may have spoken to you in your language but it's the matter of trusting yourself which will increase as I said with practice. As for the other recent contact, the one that destabilized you for the month of January, we see that you handled this quite well. Your emotions could have carried you off where you could have become lost for an unspecified time. Some get lost in these storms for the remainder of their earthly life. You were grounded, rooted, and have the pure motive of love guiding you. The frequencies of former selves, as you call them, can be very distorting, especially when unannounced or uninvited. You handled this with grace and compassion, which allowed the other soul to say his peace to his former love through your dream which brought closure for him and allowed normality to resume for all involved. I spoke about love in my time. Seth spoke about love as well. This is something dear to you and I perceive it's something you and perhaps I will speak more about it's been highly distorted in your collective world and those such as ourselves seek to mediate it as much as possible so that its power might pervade in all its fullness. We perceive a question from you. Yes, thank you. What would the first contactee you mentioned have said to me in my language. Essentially what you received as an impression would have been put into words. I won't quote anything here, but suffice it to say, he was impressed by you and your message to him. He found you honest and genuine, and as you already know, via your impression that he gave his blessing this may have been different had you not reached out, but this is one such example of you trusting yourself. You've come a long way in this regard, and our communication would not be possible without it. No er other worldly communications would be. This is not to say that all otherworldly communications are accurate or even real just because the writer appears to trust themselves. Human egos are the biggest tricksters that ever were. They have motives that sometimes go unrecognized by the very soul itself. That's why heart work is so important. If this is to be 
considered a channeling, then it's through a pure heart, not purely mind. We find it interesting that you have no plans of writing a book, but intend to share this via your electronic device. We are not opposed one way or the other, as you are one who follows their heart, an activated heart, as you put it. And I just saw your friend, who was the catalyst for this activation. I am very fond of this friend myself. I spent many afternoons admiring and observing them as well as their homes, who are also very good friends. So we have a lot in common. I do look forward and sort of backward to our communication. And always remember that if it causes too much trouble in your world, that you don't have to go public with these, but that we are happy to commune with you privately. All the best, Jane Roberts. So that was, uh, that was session number one. Was session number one. Uh, if anybody wants to read some very fascinating material, very interesting material, you can uh, look up the channel Tim Hart Hart, where he has uh, audiobooks of pretty much all of Jane's work. And I guess if there's some that's not on there, he's in the process of getting it on there. But uh, anyway, I'm sure some people will think I'm totally whack and others won't. But like she said, it is a matter of trusting yourself. And in our world, I think we all have a uh, ways to go when it comes to trusting ourself. And I think the, the first major thing that has to happen for that to even come about is unlearning, unlearning. We are indoctrinated by so much so early that by the time you get, you know, to let's say 30, you have a solid worldview established, which is a state of consciousness. And so your worldview holds you in that state of consciousness and doesn't allow you to, to see other worlds, other possibilities, other dimensions. And the subconscious is, is very rooted in to that worldview by the time you're, you know, 30. So, wouldn't it be great if we could start unlearning all the crap, you know, let's say while we're still teenagers, and by the time you got to 30, you realized you didn't have a worldview. You didn't need a worldview, that you could stay completely open, and you could trust yourself. You could trust your heart and you could uh, see all the things that you never saw and experience all the things that you want to experience but just don't know how and you don't really know what's stopping you and blocking you from it 
when it is in fact your worldview and or your state of consciousness. So that's all for this one, friends. I love everybody dearly, and I will see you here next time. Wholeness until then.